Greetings and welcome to our online service on this fifth Sunday of Lent. The Lord be with you. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your steadfast love. According, according to your, your abundant mercy, mercy blot, blot out, out our, our transgressions. transgressions. You desire truth in our deepest selves, so teach us our hearts wisdom. Let, Let us hear your, your joy and gladness. gladness. Let, Let the, the bones that you, that you have crushed rejoice. rejoice. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and put a new and right spirit within us. Sustain in us willing spirits and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Let us worship God first in prayer. God of boundless mercy and unfailing love, we gather together to worship you, to proclaim your goodness and to offer our thanks and praise. Meet us here, we pray. Join our hearts in wholehearted worship. Breathe your word into our souls. Engrave your covenant of grace into our minds and hearts. Cultivate your character in us. Inspire and shape us. Unite and encourage us that our lives may reflect your love and justice to the world. Amen. Amen. We pray the collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now the call to confession. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, 
For they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. We come together to confess our sin because sin is not only an individual offense, but a communal one. Together let us confess our sin before God, trusting in God's forgiveness. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. From age to age, God has promised to forgive us and make us new. God's love and forgiveness are given to us freely, though we don't deserve them. I declare to you, God's law is in our hearts. We are God's people, and through the grace of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we are forgiven. Let us pray the collect for today. God of suffering and glory, in Jesus Christ you reveal the way of life. Inscribe your law on our hearts, that we may not stray from you, but remain your faithful people, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now listen to the word of God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, beginning at verse 20. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew, Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, This voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I... When I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The reading for today is from John chapter 12, and for us Lent is nearly over, and at the time for Jesus, crucifixion loomed, and in today's Gospel reading he speaks plainly, he is going to die. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified, he said in verse 23. And then he goes on to invite all of us to join him. But the truth is that death brings life in Christ. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, 
it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces more seeds. Life cannot happen fully unless death occurs first. For all of us, at most, we will spend a hundred years on earth, but eternity in heaven. In Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, we are told, He has also set eternity in the hearts of men and women, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. It is beyond our understanding. The capacity of our brains is inadequate to conceive of what God has in store for each one of us. We don't know much about heaven, but we do know that it's perfect, that there's no pain or suffering, there is no selfishness or violence, and there is no time. This life is not all that there is. It's just a dress rehearsal before the real production. We will spend more time on the other side in eternity than here. And Jesus said in the reading today, whoever, loses their, who, sorry, whoever loves their life will lose it, and whoever hates their lives in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. So what does it mean to follow Jesus? Because for all of us, selfishness is innate. But God tells us to die to the selfish life and to follow him now. How do we do it? Firstly, by worshipping him. Worship is our first responsibility to God. Our worship should be motivated by love, by thanksgiving, and by delight, not by duty. And worship is not just singing or praise in church. Worship is a lifestyle of enjoying God, of loving him, of giving ourselves to be used for his purpose. Everything that we do in life can be an act of worship, Brother Lawrence famously said. And besides worshipping him, we follow him by loving other people, learning to see others as God sees them. He sees grace in every human being. We know we have passed from death to life, we are told in 1 John 3, because we love our brothers and sisters. Whoever does not love is still in the realm of death. So we follow God by worshipping him, by loving others, and then thirdly, by becoming like Christ, by growing into the character of Christ. It's a process that is life-changing for the rest of life. And the character of Christ, as we know from Galatians 5, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, and self-control. And fourthly, we follow God by serving others. Each one of us has a unique gift. The way we are wired is not an accident. It's not only for our own selfish purposes, but to benefit others. So the question that's asked of all of us is, what will we live for? Will we spend the rest of our lives living for ourselves, for God, for others? Will we live the rest of our lives focusing on our own goals, our own comfort, our own pleasure? Or will we live it for God's glory, knowing that he has promised us eternity in paradise if we follow him? God is asking us to fulfill his glory by dying to self and living for him by serving others. The world defines greatness in terms of power, possessions, and prestige, and position. If you can demand service from others, you've arrived, the world thinks. But God measures greatness differently. He measures it by how we serve others, about how many people we serve, not how many serve us. Thousands of books have been written on leadership, but few on servanthood, because everyone wants to lead and few want to serve. The most important thing to have is the right attitude of heart. In our natural state is one of self-centeredness. God, in contrast, calls us to a life of service, of being centered on the needs of others. Why do we need to serve God? Each one of us is a unique individual, deeply loved by God, and there's no one exactly like us. We are called to surrender to his will, to thank him for every blessing he has given us, and to serve others. Whenever we serve others in any way, we're actually doing it for God. God specially chose each one of us. In Jeremiah 1 it says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. We were each of us placed on earth for a special reason. Our sins are forgiven because Jesus died for us. He paid a great price on our behalf, a price that we can never repay. 
all that we can do is accept His grace. We cannot be saved by service. We cannot be saved by doing things for others. But we are saved for service. We are saved by Christ to serve Him by serving others. It is because of His love for us that we want to serve others. In this demonstration of love for others, we provide evidence that we have passed over from death to life. But it does not earn us that life. God made us in his own image and sends angels to watch over us. He sends the Holy Spirit to guide us and the Bible to teach us. We grow by serving other people every day. Remember those famous words, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones will certainly not lose their reward. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. I, I believe, believe in God, God the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come to the prayers of the people. Lord, we come before you with our prayers for others. Write on our hearts the names of people, places, and situations that are in need of change, so we can pray with hope. And so we pray for the church throughout the world, especially where to be a Christian is to risk everything. We pray for places where your church is flourishing. We pray for places where your church is struggling. We pray for your spirit to come with hope and with renewed energy. We pray for the church in our diocese and its needs. And as we move towards our celebration of Christ's resurrection, Send your healing spirit to raise our hearts and our hopes for the promise of new life in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord God, for the nations of the world, we pray. For all the people of the world and for those who lead them, we pray for wisdom in leadership and decisions that prosper all people. For those parts of the world where there is war or conflict, or injustice or suffering. We pray for your perfect peace. We also pray for our own country and its government in these uncertain times. Let those who lead hear the voices of wisdom and the voices of despair and act for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our parish community here at St. Michael's that by keeping Lent well, we will come to the celebration of Easter with hearts and minds renewed. We pray for all lay people who give unselfishly of their time and energy to the church and the administration of our church, that they may be strengthened and guided by the Holy Spirit in all they do. We also pray for and give thanks for our newly elected church wardens and parish council, and we pray God's continued blessing on them as they avail themselves to serve God and his people in this vineyard. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Christ, our healer, you care for and comfort all who are sick, lonely, depressed, suffering, unemployed or underdeployed, widowed and orphaned. Today we remember such persons among us especially those among us who are ill. Give them the joy of your saving help and sustain them with your bountiful spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we also pray for all those who spend their lives caring for others, 
sometimes with little support and often with little time and space for themselves. Lord, give them strength in your love. And we also give thanks for all those who have recovered their well-being through the power of prayer and your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for all those who have recently died, those who have been victims of war and terror, of natural disaster, of accidents, of violence and illness. Today we especially remember all those whose anniversary of their death falls at this time. We pray for those who mourn the death of a loved one, that you, Lord, will heal their wounds and fill them with hope in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you taught your disciples that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So as we prepare our hearts to remember your death and resurrection, grant us the strength and wisdom to serve and follow you this day and always. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And so we pray these prayers in the name of our glorified and crucified Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, whose power draws all people to himself. Amen. Amen. We now say a prayer over the offertory. Generous God, you have acted graciously on our behalf all the days of our lives. We have been blessed abundantly. Our cup runs over with goodness and mercy. Bless these gifts we return to you now. As we return to you, these gifts, we make them cheerfully and with ready spirits. Help us always to be thankful. Amen. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now the blessing. People of God, go forth on your Lenten journey, knowing that you do not go alone. Have courage as you walk toward the cross, even through the valley of the shadow of death. For the word of life has been planted within you, and God has promised that it will bear much fruit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, in the, the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
chains fell off, my heart was free, I rose. 